Hey guys, and welcome to the latest episode of Back With The Squad. I'm your host, Lila Bromberg, and I'm here with the 2004 Maryland men's basketball team who won the 2004 ACC tournament. First up, we have Hall of Famer coach Gary Williams. How's everybody? Hope we're healthy. Then we have Nick Painter Medley. How's everybody doing? Thank you very much for doing this. It's great to see everybody. We have uh, 2004 ACC tournament MVP John Gilchrist. Hello, how's everybody doing? Uh, we have Jamar Smith. Hey, hope everybody's staying safe out there. We have Travis Garrison. Hello, everybody. And Andre Collins. What's up, everybody? So how are you guys doing? How are, how's everything been? You guys, a lot of you guys have young kids uh, stuck at home with you, right? Yes. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> this is learning. This is learning. Oof. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm new as that. I have a five month old. So. Yeah, I gotta get some advice from from the vets. <laughs> <laughs> we still learning ourselves, man. Yeah, you learn every day, every day process. Yeah, they teaching us actually. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I guess can everyone kind of give for fans just kind of an update at you know what you're doing career wise and everything like that. I just finished uh, my 14th season professionally. I was in Japan this year <clears throat> and, uh, you know, still playing. That's pretty much uh, still my main focus is, you know, staying in, in shape during the off season and, and uh, preparing for next season. Obviously, with what's going on with the um, there's some unknowns moving forward, but, you know, just, just staying in shape and preparing for next season. Um, John here. Uh, I'm I'm down in Virginia Beach, um, teaching. Uh, I teach at a high school. I teach special education and uh, coaching, coaching with the local high school. So that's basically what I've been up to. All right, I go. Um, Travis Garrison. Uh, I finished playing. I finished up my career in 2017, but ever since, I've uh, been on motivational speaking. I've been a life coach. Uh, I just finished my third book. Uh, uh, working on some real estate investing. Um, being a parent, been a parent. So uh, everything's been good with me so far. Just, uh, you know, working on the next phase of my, my life, my career. Jamar? Yes, I'll go. I'm looking at Dre. I'm looking at so many things going on. But That's the order. That's the order she oh, said. Jamar, I mean, I, my bad, my bad. But I finished, <laughs> I finished about three years ago from Japan where Nick's at now. And now I've just really been home and enjoying being a parent and helping kids when I can to better them. So to, to, what we, to get to the level that basically that we was at. Um, it's Andre. I am uh, back on the Eastern Shore. Um, I finished playing, I think, about four years ago. Uh, after retiring, I've been um, coaching at a high school down here on the Eastern Shore. Um, I own a basketball gym where I pretty much uh, work on skill development training with, with, with the youth mostly. But uh, here recently, I've been working with pros as well. Um, I host basketball camps, uh, do celebrity game, bringing awareness to uh, different problems that we have in the community down here on the Eastern Shore. Um, just really trying to give back and and get the shore back to a place that it, you know, that it used to be when I was growing up. Other than that, just just taking care of my three kids. And before we get into talking the season, uh, I have to ask about something that happened before the season. I read about coach. Is it true you uh, arrived at Midnight Madness on a Harley Davidson motorcycle? Uh, yeah, no, I survived too. Uh, <laughs> but it was uh, I only had a ride at um, maybe. 20 yards and I survived, but, uh, it, it was, you know, you try to do things to get things excited for midnight madness. And it was midnight madness was a bigger deal when everybody used to start at the same time. We did that. Um, I came in in a tank one time, um, you know, did some things. So I oh, went a race car one time. I thought I was going to kill myself then for sure, but, uh, survived. And one thing, you know, Jamar and I grew up about 15 miles apart in South Jersey or as we refer to it, God's country. Um, mm. And uh, 
you know, it, it was it was great to see. I finally got a guy from South Jersey came down and played for me in Maryland when Jamar came down. What did you guys think when he uh, rode in on the motorcycle? Did you guys know that was happening? We were basically just praying for him because I never knew he could ride motorcycle. Honestly, <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> some, some guys were some guys are praying for me. Some guys are playing against me. You know, <laughs> came in about forty miles an hour. Yeah, I, I didn't know how to ride. Bad. I never rode a motorcycle. <laughs> I think DJ on now too. I can't see him. I seen him pop in, but I can't see him now. I saw him a second ago, but then he came out. I don't know. Okay. He's probably going through the same thing I was going through. Yeah. I... <laughs> Hopefully he'll be on in a few minutes. Um, and coach, for you this season, you know, for 2003, 2004 was the first time in a while that you had a really young team. I mean, most guys on this call were, you know, sophomores. How did you approach that, both in terms of your expectations and coaching? Well, we lost some uh, guys that had, you know, four year experience. Whenever you, you know, especially back then, when you had guys that, became seniors, uh, it was very, you, you were apprehensive about the next year, but uh, in terms of um, the talent, I, I really thought we were a talented team. Uh, the league that year, there was only nine teams back then in the league, and six of them were ranked in the top 20 at the end of the season. So yeah, I, knew, I knew the league was going to be very tough, and we had to fight away uh, just to get into a position where you know, if we did do well in the ACC tournament, I thought we would make the NCAA tournament, but every game was a fight. We won our last two regular season games, which really helped us. I think that gave us momentum going into uh, the tournament. And, of course, when you get into that tournament, it's usually in North Carolina, and we wound up having to play the uh, three two-and-one seeds in Carolina and, you know, three Carolina teams. So it was difficult. And, you know, you look back and, it, you know, you play against Chris Paul, you play against J.J. Redick, you play against people like that, you know you beat good teams. And, you know, I think that's one of the uh, biggest things I remember about uh, these guys is they, they stepped it up. In other words, a lot of people wrote us, wrote us off a couple times during the year, and it really made me mad because I knew we were getting better. Our records didn't necessarily show it, but we were getting better. We had already beaten number one in the country, Florida, at Florida. Uh, we we had beaten NC State when they were ranked like 15th. Wisconsin, I think, was like 16th or 17th. So we really had some quality wins, but it was just like every time it seemed we got some momentum, we we play somebody really good on the road and not win. And people would say, "Well, you know, you're too young, you can't play, and all that stuff." But you know, you use that as motivation. And these guys hung tough. You know, they they just stayed with it, and uh, we became a very good team. And Really, when we got to the NCAA, I, I didn't think we got a break at all. We had to play Thursday after playing three straight games uh, in Carolina. We had to go to Colorado to play. And, uh, you know, we won the first game against uh, Texas El Paso and then lost uh, to Syracuse uh, by two uh, to send the thing into overtime. So it, it was really a great year. And the ACC tournament champion is the official champion of the ACC for that year. It's not the regular season team. Only three Maryland teams in the history of Maryland ever won that thing. I think it was 58, uh, 84, maybe some, somewhere in there. And then we did it. So uh, I'm really proud of these guys, what they accomplished. Yeah, how did the rest of you guys handle that? Just It seems like there's a lot of talk throughout the season, just people you know, not seeing the potential for this team or just talking about you know whether you guys were going to make that 11th consecutive tournament how, especially as a young team, did you guys all handle that pressure? Um, I feel that, you know, pressure comes along with the game. You know, if people are talking about you, then apparently you must be pretty good. If, you, if you're terrible, then they won't have any expectations on you anyway. But um, we all knew every day in practice, battling in practice, that we would become a better team. And uh, as Coach said, with nine teams in the league, I remember it was, it was a dogfight every game. Like, I hated playing against, you know, the Clemsons of the world. But all, every team, you know, the wake, I mean, you go from top to bottom, you know, it was going to be a dogfight. But, um, you know, we, we grew it a year, as a year went along, as Coach said, and, you know, we, we, we shone at the right time. Mm. Yeah, we basically, like he said, practice, we competing every day. So we know what we can do. So no matter what everybody else say, we see each other's games every day, and this is like one of the most confident teams that I've been on 
So just that right alone, people counting us out, we know what we can do. So we're going in there, and we just got to handle our business. So we took care of that first game. And, and I think just after handling that first game, just took our confidence to another level to where we just knew we just got to keep going. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. You know, I, I know we definitely went in there basically like, man, it's, it's us against the world type of attitude. We just can go out there and hoop and just have fun. And, you know, the rest was history. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I remember going into it knowing we had to, we had some work to do um, you know, to kind of control our own destiny. You mentioned the, the NCAA tournament. Um, you know, and we took it one game at a time. If I remember right, I think we were down to NC State at the halftime. Mm-hmm. Yeah, about 20. You know, yeah. and, you know, that second half, that comeback, um, you know, I think that that kind of gave us a lot of tailwinds and momentum going into the next few games. Uh, yeah. It was an unbelievable experience. Looking back at it, the thing I remember the most is my, my roommate was uh, with AG. Um, I mean, his mindset and, and the way that he played, obviously it was a team effort. The way he played in that tournament, I'll never forget. Um, it, was pretty, it was pretty incredible. Um, and the headspace that he was in, I wanted to ask him, you know, and, and reflect on looking back. I mean, being around him every day, the way he prepared or the way you prepared, John, for that, those games in the locker room, I remember even you were reading the Bible before and I'd never really seen you do that before a game and you were just in a headspace it was um quiet I mean your demeanor was a little bit different um and going into those games I mean it was just it was pretty incredible to the performances that, that JG was going on during that weekend yeah I was going to get into specific games with you guys in a little bit but just with that MVP you know tournament performance um, what was it like for you guys just being able to watch that and be a part of that to, you know, see what John was doing that over those three games? It was, it was, uh, I, I want to chime in, uh, to one of the, one of the, the hard things I found about with team sports, you know, is you have to be in one accord with your teammates and you also have to, you know, want to play your best game. So, you know, I found, you know, as a, as a person, I always looked at basketball as an art. And that's kind of like, you know, when, when I want to play my best game, I kind of just focus in and just make sure that everything, you know, that I'm in my best, you know, frame of mind to play. You know what I mean? But it's kind of hard. Once again, if you're a point guard, for, you know, the people you got to communicate with people, so you can't be isolated. But at the same time, it's just, you know, all things got to click. You know what I mean? So that's kind of the mind space. All I just wanted to play the perfect game, which is, you know, just get the best performance, personal performance for the team. But, you know, in college, looking back on it, the bond that we have, you know, I, I couldn't act like that all the time because the bond that we have, I couldn't isolate myself from everybody. But the bond that we have, you know, I, I we still talk to the day from the times that we had, you know, in the locker room and in the dorm room, you know, Nick and, you know, being a roommate, Travis, and coming in, Jamar, Andre, and, uh, Chris, everybody. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's an incredible thing. But back to you guys. I thought uh, John's performance in the uh, ACC tournament, there, there's a player I've been watching since the mid-60s, the ACC tournament. The only performance to equal John's, and I don't think it was better, was a player named Randolph Childress who played for Wake Forest. He was an assistant coach uh, this past year with Danny Manning down there at Wake. And he had the same type of uh, games that John did, not just, you know, the points obviously are always important, but the you know, running the team, um, the assists, and, you know, things like that. And, you know, we had some guys really step up. Travis, you had a great game uh, during that tournament. And, you know, Jamar Smith was uh, made first team uh, all ACC team along with John. And, you know, so so there were some guys that really stepped up and, you know, made it, you know, a special time for us. You know, Mike Brennan comes in and he says he guarded J.J. Riddick on the last shot in regulation, but – I think JJ missed. That's the way I looked at it. And then he made the two big free throws. He made two big free throws out over time. You know, and, and you think about that, you guys have played. You know, Mike was never in a pressure situation before. And here we are in the championship game of the ACC. And he's got to go make two free throws to probably uh, guarantee the win for us. And 
None of them touched anything. You know, he knocked them both down. I don't mean to cut you off, Coach, but I felt more confident with him at the line than even myself being at the line. Like, seeing him in practice, to me, Mike, Mike was a really good shooter. Yeah, yeah, he was, but uh, I've seen a lot of really good shooters get a little tight in that situation. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, so crazy, just recently, I, um, I don't know, I, I just found it on YouTube, like that, that whole tournament, they got like a, 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 docu- a document, uh, documentary uh, about that whole ACC tournament, how it was like one of the best in, in the history. Really? And, I, and I just just sit, yeah, just seeing that, those games, how they ran through them, that's my first time ever seeing it. And just seeing that process, man, and like I said, we were just in the zone that weekend, man. Like, it was – it wasn't even – for us, bro, it was like having fun and hooping. Like, oh, you know, man. it was just like, man, our confidence was just on a, a whole never level. I know for myself, man, you know, it was just like, man, you know, just go out there and have fun. Like, nobody – nobody wasn't expecting nothing from us anyway. We was on a bubble. And then even now, I go up to some, some of the murder football games and I talk to some of the fans and they hear their stories about – them being fans and watching the whole process, how they basically left at halftime in the SC State game and thought it was over. Yeah. And they started hearing us come back. Like, those stories, man, I'm like, I, I was literally just talking to some other dudes around here not too long ago about that tournament. Everybody always bring up the AC tournament and that that run and how it was, like, the greatest. And, you know, like, like for me, like, doing my whole basketball career, that was, like, probably, like, the most memorable moment because of the adversity we had to overcome. Coming in on the bubble and then end up getting the fourth seed. Like that's like uh, that's we, crazy. We, you know what I'm saying? We know like, what if we you, put in though. Huh? So we know what we put in, the work we put in all season. We know. Right. So right. they don't see that. All they see is the rankings and this, but we know the work we put in. The right. build. But, but the right. thing so crazy about me, the thing that's so crazy about this team, we always stepped up though. Like we played Duke, we always stepped up. We went mm-hmm. in beat Florida at Florida. That was I, I still remember the big games. We always yeah. You could look in the locker room, look at you, you knew it was coming to play. You know, I felt that we were a team that we played better with our back in school, honestly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we just had right. a strawberry join. How are you doing? How's uh you just had a baby girl, right? Yeah, just had a baby girl. Brother. Yes, bro. Appreciate it. Appreciate DJ, it. What's up, bro? Congratulations, DJ. Long time. Uh, thank you. Long time. Good to see you guys, man. Good to see you. DJ, when you think back on this season, what stands out the most to you? Uh, I mean, for for me, it was just everybody was uh, so competitive every day. You know, uh, I mean, me, Chris, Mike Jones, Nick, John, everybody was so competitive. Travis, Jamar, Dre, everybody at every position was so competitive every day. And we all pushed each other. We all got better every day as the season went on. We played well in big games. Nobody, nobody was scared of the moment. Um, you know, it, it, this was definitely one of my favorite teams to play on because, uh, you know, it was, just a, it was just a fight every day in practice and a fight every day, you know, every game that we had to play against. And before we get into some of uh, your guys' most memorable ba- games for the season, I wanted to ask you guys, I mean, just looking at your schedule, you guys face a lot of really incredible, you know, players that year from J.J. Reddick and Luau Dang to Chris Paul, Will Bynum, uh, Adam Morrison from Gaga. When you think about who you face that year and, like, who, who was the toughest to guard and play against for each week? That's easy. That's J.J. Reddick. Now, <laughs> every play was for him. Coming off screens, he had Sheldon Williams setting screens. He had uh, Sheldon Randolph on the other side setting screens. Uh, he was by far the toughest player for us to guard. You never knew when he was going to shoot. Uh, you couldn't relax. You couldn't take any breaks. You had to have focus for the whole the entire game against him. Two players that stand out to me in my time in Maryland that were incredible to watch was uh, Chris Bosch. He was at Georgia Tech that year. We played against him. He was incredible. And uh, Chris Paul, he was the first guy that I saw at that side he could just do so much, you know, and, yeah. you know, like, don't, you know, he was the fastest guy that ever guarded. He was the only person I've ever seen. You could, he, you, your team would score the basket. He'll get the ball out really quick. And we're like, as a point guard, you're back at half court, you know, as a last line defense. So by the time you have tried up the court, he's coming back around him like a running back, mm-hmm. attacking you at the top of the key. Like, it was incredible, you know, it was incredible. 
For me, a couple guys that stand out, I don't think it was the 2003, 2004 season. Um, but Josh Hopper, um, yeah, he was good too. Oh, I forgot about him. He was yeah. good. You know, he was in in my position, so it was always my matchup. And and I, you know, he just played with really good speed. He was really good guard. He used his body well. He didn't really rush or force anything. Um, you know, so I thought he was real tough. And the other guy who was tough, mostly because of his competitive nature, was Julius Thomas. Let us say that. You know, I don't know, an MF or I don't know if we're cursing on here, but he, <laughs> he, he was just tough. He was always, and he was, he always had a lot to say. The guy who you had to be engaged with, and he was definitely not intimidated. He was, he was always a, a, tough, a tough matchup for sure, at least from my perspective, from my position. Definitely. Coach, what did you game plan for the most? Uh, of those guys or, you know, what teams do you kind of, or any teams or players do you really emphasize in game planning? Well, for the teams we played in the ACC tournament, uh, the one thing about that, you just have to get ready for that first game because if you lose, it doesn't matter after that. So you spend a lot of time really preparing, like in this situation, Chris Paul, uh, Wake Forest, that was going to be played first. And, you know, they were the third seed in the tournament and a, a very good basketball team, as, as we talked about. And uh, we did a great job uh, defending Chris Paul. I think he had 30, um, but we got the win. So uh, that, that's what counted. And, you know, that game, the thing I remember about that game, it didn't get over to like 1130 at night. It was the last game of the first day. We had to come back and play one o'clock against uh, NC State, and, um, the second seed, who was also ranked. And, uh, you know, getting down in 19, 20 at halftime, you look back and, you know, there's a reason for that. We were probably tired. We didn't have the preparation. We didn't have enough time to go over what we should go for NC State. But, but typical of this team, they, they just wouldn't quit. That, you know, a lot of teams, they, you know, it was what might have been the last game of the year if we lost. We might not have made the NCAA tournament. So it would have been just as easy to go home if we weren't tough, but our guys were tough. You know, that, that's the one thing about this team. You know, they didn't, they didn't, uh, they decided their own fate. You know, they, they took the games into their own hands. And one of the first games I was going to ask you guys about early on in the season, uh, you guys faced number 15, Wisconsin, and were able to meet them 73, 67 in overtime. What do you guys remember from uh, that okay. game? I think I might have missed a three to, so it wouldn't go to overtime. I remember that. Uh, what an environment that was. I mean, that gym, I remember that gym specifically being one of the wildest environments um, in the four years that, that we played in. <clears throat> and they were, you know, a well-coached team and, and uh, really disciplined the way they played their offense and did it defensively. So I remember that. A really tough game. Tough games. And I can remember. That that was my intro to Big Ten basketball. That that's when I saw how big and physical that those guys played. They played at a different pace in ACC. Yeah, I felt like we liked to run it more, and they wanted to kind of ground and pound it a little bit. It, it was a different game to me. You know that 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 Midwestern ball is a different style. I feel. And I had a good point, guard. Yeah. I mean, and just how important was defense for you guys in that game? I mean, DJ had four steals and, and Chris had three steals and then Nick had four blocks. I mean, I think that's flat. Playing for Coach Williams, everybody had a great defense. You know, that's, that's rule number one. You know, and uh, even some of the some of the drills we used to do in practice, I, I even uh, stole some of them when I do it with my, with my kids when I train and I do stuff like that. We have a drill where, you know, just different stuff. We have to, you know, get in a deeper position. And you got to slide. And, you know, it, it was – yeah, you got to play hard to be on the court. Yeah, that was funny with um, – go ahead, Jamar. Go ahead. No, you got it. I'm just agreeing. No, I just no. thought it was uh, – you know, we were a really good offensive team. I mean, we, if we didn't get 80 points, something was wrong. You know, I mean, we – you know, you play Wisconsin, they play a different style. They're going to slow you down a little bit. But, you know, the rest of the way, like the ACC games, and, you know, if we didn't get to 80 uh, – you know, I was surprised. And we played good enough defense. I think the key key to our team when we had the big wins, we could shut people down for periods of the game. 
and it's really good teams. You're not, you know how that guys, you know how it goes. You're not going to shut everybody down completely, but if you can just do it for the right two or three minutes, sometimes that's enough to win the game. Definitely. And another, you know, big defensive game, one of the biggest games of the season outside of the ECC tournament was, you know, when you guys went to number one Florida, they had just been named number one in the country, and you guys were able to beat them 69-78 and get coaches 300 career victory at Maryland. So just kind of going into that game, they had just been named number one, and you guys were on a two-game losing streak. What was just the team heading into that game? Me personally, I just felt that they, they were overranked. They were overrated, you know. Um, they had the one guy on the wing I forgot. Uh, they were always on the ESPN and told me he had a supermodel girlfriend and all this, you know, side <laughs> stuff. So, so, Matt Walsh. Matt Walsh. Yeah. Matt Walsh. Matt Walsh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, at the end of the day, you know, it, I just look at that as few. You look at ESPN and they're building players up. Like, okay, we're going to see them. You know, simple as that. I think I couldn't agree more. I think we had a we were a team that, that, that seemed to always step up in good games. And a moment. Obviously, Florida is another really tough environment. Uh, and I think the young guys who went in were able to perform against a really good team, a tough environment. And to us, when you lose a games in a row, it's kind of crazy how people start to get on you and get on you. And, you know, remaining confident and continue to work. But, you know, you kind of feel like back to the wall and it was a great opportunity for us to get a statement win. Um, so I think we just went in there and stepped up the win from, from uh, you know, college. We were going in there as sophomores. And we did it also when they were number one. Uh, we are pretty much the same group. Um, so I think we had uh, quite a few wins like that that, uh, you know, we stepped up in, in big games. I, I remember two things about that game. Uh, Travis hit the uh, jump shot to kind of seal it for us. And Travis, I believe that was your only field goal that night. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was the right one. <laughs> and then, then, and then I, I remember John fouled out right at the start of overtime. John, you got your fit. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. Sir. So I remember telling TJ, I, I said, uh, you're our point guard. So, you know, good luck. You know, with, with all that, and DJ did a heck of a job because Florida, you know, Billy Donovan, he was known for his pressure defense. And I knew, especially when John got out, that they'd come after us, you know, pressure-wise. And I thought we did a great job in the overtime of getting into our offense and handling the basketball. So, I mean, that was a great team win is what that was. That was a great team win. That was the loudest gym I ever played in. I couldn't even yeah. hear it. I think you, I, and Coach, I think you, that you can't say that. You can't say that. More loud than Indiana? That was, I, I say so. I, 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 I couldn't. Indiana? Yeah. I, Florida. I couldn't hear, yeah, Florida. You couldn't hear anything uh, there. Hey, 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 Coach, I really told you before a game, like, you don't have to use your hands a lot because the gym will be right. so loud. Yeah. And literally, I think DJ was trying to call the player in front of us. And I'm like, I can't hear nothing. Can't I, hear. Remember I remember that. I remember that. I was playing the point. I was trying to protect the ball. <laughs> calling the play. Y'all like, what's playing? I'm like, right. yeah. 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 Front, something. Yeah. <laughs> what made that game? What made that game bigger is remember we had a dog fight with them the year before, right? Yeah, yeah. at home, so they couldn't yeah. wait to get that yeah. out. Yeah. That's right. They beat us at home. They broke our uh, win streak. Yeah. At home. We had yeah. like a big win streak going on. Yeah. They beat us. Yeah. yeah. And you guys had a lead of seventeen at a time, and then you know, kind of went cold, couldn't score for a field goal for the last nine minutes of regulation. How did you guys kind of regroup to then get it back together in overtime and? Uh, come away with a victory. Defense. Defense is always the baseline of our, of our wins. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And that's one of those things you get into games and all of a sudden you look up, you're 17 up. And, you know, we weren't better than 17 with the number one team in the country on their court. So they're going to make a run. It's just, you know, sometimes you, you get caught up a little bit and once, once we got to overtime, I thought we were okay. I really did. And, uh, I thought we were going to win the game. How big was Jamar's, uh, Jamar's block there at the end? Like, what was your guys' reaction to that play? Jamar played defense? 
<laughs> That's why everybody got quiet when I <laughs> I mean, I, I think that was one of the reasons where it really made our team special. We had, uh, like they saw the stretch force, like, you know, a lot of teams going with that. We had a couple, like from Jamar to, you know, we put Travis, you know, Nick could play that position. We had a lot of guys that can even, Ken A can get out there in the guard. We had a lot of guys that can guard on the perimeter, you know, so so we were switching all different stuff. We could, we could do a lot of different looks. You know, and I think that's what really made our team tough. Mm. Yeah. And getting into the first ACC tournament game against Wake Forest in 87-86 victory, you guys were the number six seed, they were the number three seed. Um, and that was, you guys had lost both your prior meetings of them, and then it was a really back and forth game. Uh, I believe it was tied nine different times. What do you guys remember just from that, you know, first ACC tournament, tournament game? We had, we had to win no matter what. That's what I remember. I know we had to get in there. I know we at least got one. We had a chance to get to the tournament. But we said, if we get in there, at least get them out the way. We knew it was going to be a fight. Like you said, we haven't won before then. But um, I know we. I knew from my perspective, I think when we talked about it, if we go in there at least win. One, if we get that one game, then we give ourselves a chance to uh, get into the tournament. I thought Wake Forest, if Chris Paul was as good as any team in the ACC, they didn't win it that year, but, you know, regular season. But I thought they were as good as anybody because Paul could, he really could control the game. Obviously, he's proven what a great player he was as he's going to the pros. But back then in college, you didn't see many guys, and uh, John Gilchrist talked about it already, about a combination of quickness, but yet being able to knock down shots when he was open. And, and so you couldn't come up on him real tight because of his speed and so he had all these things going for him and he always worried about that if the game was close in the last two minutes he'd just win the game for his team in that last two minutes but we did a good job uh, and once again you know we had to score you know certain games you have to score we had to score in that game that game got up really high so I think we got to 90 in that game and, you know so your offense is just as important as your defense when you're playing really good teams what was your guys' mindset when you're in a really back and forth game like that? Get stops. I mean, that's that's yeah. like when we come in the huddle. That's what we say. We gotta get yeah. stops. Like Coach said, you know, I mean, you know, like when you know, Coach Scott did a great job of recruiting guys from all over the country. So we know each other's background, and you can look at the high school numbers. And you know, Nick scored a zillion points up in Maine, and Travis, you know, McDonald's and DJ. Everybody knew his name, and you know, so guys. To play, you know what I mean. You know, Jamar. Everybody had, you know, we knew that we could score points, but getting the stops were always our main mindset. Someone's going to make a basket. I thought it was pretty obvious too for us that that John really was going. You talk about having to score points offensively. Um, you know, I don't remember specifically, but I feel like it was pretty much everything down the stretch. He was just demoralizing the other teams because. He couldn't do anything with him. He was scoring threes, threes um, and basically, probably if, if Chris Paul, we were probably going back and forth down the stretch. So, you know, I think we just kind of went and it's obvious that Chris Paul was in his own and, and I think that helped us a lot uh, getting some tough buckets we needed. I mean, that, that's the key to any good team. I mean, you, you got to ride the high end. You know, every time someone says to me, you know, how did, you know, once again, like Nick said, I was just zoned out just trying to just win as we get to the tournament. But, um, you know, everybody, you know, there's been other games that, you know, like you said, the Florida game, you know, I didn't really score that much, different games. I remember at the Duke game, you know, we beat Duke at Duke. I can't remember who juniors, sophomore, junior year. And Nick, like, you had went off and all that. And just everybody, you know, you know who's the high end. And we just ride the high end and then we just take it from there. But the main thing, the common denominator is getting stopped, I feel. What's it like being in an environment like that, especially, you know, with the ACC tournament where you're facing a lot of teams that are, you know, from that area? I, honestly, for me, I don't, I, don't, I don't even think we thought about that. I don't even think that was in our, that our mindset in the sense of, like, where we at, who we going against. We was like, like we was going out there. I say, I think we was going out there like, man, go out here, play your heart. Yeah. Have fun, you know what I mean? So we've like, been down before. Yeah, uh, yeah, right. you just so like, yo, been down there. Have fun and hoop. We go yeah. hoop. I was like, go out there and hoop. <laughs> Nothing to lose. Nothing I thought one of the key things, you know, beating Florida early in the season 
when you went on the road, you knew you could do it. You know, you beat the number one team on the road in the country. So once you get a win like that early in the season, that, that carry that carries a little more weight than uh, some ones. I don't know about you guys, but I felt like if any time we beat Duke, I felt like I won the national championship. So, <laughs> <laughs> I just the day. I mean, I, the thing I knew the most about Maryland was beating Duke four times in a row. Mm. And, you know, they, they can't take that away. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, beating Duke, not too many teams do that. You know, so. That's and true. That- that next game in the tournament, uh, you know, when you're playing NC State, uh, what was it? You know, you guys are trailing by as much as 21 points in the first half, down 19 at halftime. Uh, what was coaches' halftime speech? How do you guys kind of, you know, regroup yourselves up during the halftime? Yeah, I don't remember the halftime speech that, that coach did, yeah. but I just remember John coming in the locker room. And he was like, "Get y'all heads up, we gonna win this game." And in my mind, I'm thinking, this game is over. This dude is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, and then the second half, we went out there and, I, I mean, John was just in a zone. And, I mean, it was unbelievable yeah. what he was doing on the court. And, uh, I mean, I was just trying to do my part. If I can if I can help on some defensive stops, whatever I can do to help him out, because I knew he was going to score on the offensive end. And Jamar, too. I just was trying to help any way I can because I was just a freshman. So I was just, I was happy to be there and I was happy to experience what was going on and just unbelievable basketball that was being played. If I can help out in any way, I was just trying to do that. And, you know, he put on a performance of a lifetime. Yo, I was like, yo, just passing the ball to get out the way, dog. Get out the way. (laughs) Like for real talk, like he was like, yo, Get, like once he started going, I was like, man, just let him keep going. I don't even care. Like let him keep going, let him keep going. And, yeah, that's stop. Bad, I, nah, I mean, I, I appreciate the comments, but um, honestly, coach, when, when we was running that uh, that motion offense, I never forget before the tournament towards the maiden season, we was running that 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 motion weed type of thing or whatever, and that's like, you know, that you know, I, I was well, one in. Yeah, but we we went to that John to try to get you more looks um, in the middle of the court. You know what I mean? We, 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 you would get it, but I, I never felt during the season a lot of times you were in great position to score. So gradually you went more to that. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a genius, but when I saw you getting hot, I was going to have to call that quite, quite a bit of time. <laughs> that, 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 was, that, that was the main adjustment I remember for the tournament. You know, like we ran that motion and I was just like, oh, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's the dribble drive, basically. You know what I mean? That's it. And now that, that was my game, was off the dribble. And, you know, that, that, that was my game, you know. But that, that's, that's all I can remember. No more. Coach, do you remember all what you told them of, at halftime of that game? Uh, a couple things. I, I went back. I went back to like guys like Gene Shue, who were like a hundred years old now, and said how hard they played for Maryland. You know, and all this stuff. And I thought I did a pretty good job. And, you know, I, I could tell we were going to play the second half. I could tell. I don't know if we could make up my team. We were going to play, so we come out. And you always want. You know, you look at that first possession. You want to make it tough on the other team, and you want to score. You know, to really get yourself off to a good start in that situation. And they came out and they hit a jumper. I think it was we got down twenty-one right at the start of the second half. So much for the halftime speech. But the, the funny thing about it, and you guys know this, when you come back from that far, we came back pretty quick. I think by about the six minute mark, we were there. You know, we, we were going to win that game. The, the problem with that is you give the other team a chance to regroup. Yeah, they got time to turn it around. And it wasn't like we won in the last minute. We, we had that thing. We had that lead, down, that lead down with about six minutes left. And even with having that lead down, I mean, with six minutes left, it's still the largest comeback in ABC tournament history. I mean, what do you guys think was the biggest key for you to pull that off? So here it is, the players. Go ahead, Jamar. I, said, I was trying, telling John to say it again. Defense. Yeah. I mean, you know, like we, we – we, the thing I love the most about this team was that we had a lot of guys that could play interchangeable positions. You know, like Jamar, I mean, he had guard skills. You know what I mean? Travis, he could shoot better than me. You know what I mean? Nick, I mean, same thing, guard skills inside, outside. So it's like we really had a mismatch almost every game. So you knew that you could just play guys at different, you know, just whoever had the mismatch, you exploit the mismatch and, you know, we we're going to get a good shot, basically. You know, sometimes when you're 
when you're coaching, it takes a while to realize what you have. And I think we had five freshmen, only one senior in Jamar. And so I was learning the team as we went on that year. You know, back back then, you couldn't practice in the summer like in a normal year they do now. So you don't really know your team until October, you know, and all of a sudden you're playing games, you know, around Thanksgiving. And so we, I gradually got that where you guys just said, we had a lot of uh, combo guys, you know, we didn't have like, oh, that guy's a power forward, that guy's that guy's forward. You know, we had a lot of uh, combo guys and that, that really uh, helped us as we got into the ACC tournament. And Chris McCray, incredible talent too. Um, yeah. And yeah, I'm trying to get him in now, man. Yeah, Chris, 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 did, Chris the score with the best of them. Chris was smooth. I'll tell you, he he, he was almost pretty out there. You know what I mean? He, 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 he. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys mentioned this a little bit earlier. What kind of confidence did being able to pull off that comeback give you guys as a team? I was, I know for me, I was like, yo, we want this. Like, we can definitely get them, like, Duke up out of there because we just came from 20 down. And like, we came, we pretty much, like, we came this far, we might as well go and finish it all. That and also, we already knew it was a tournament. That, that was in my mind. I was, at least we secured the spot in tournament. So, I was happy about that. Yeah. So then, c- coming into the next game to, you know, play Duke, a team that, you know, had it lost a conference postseason game since 1998. They had won the past five tournament titles. Were you guys just kind of feeling confident riding that past game um, going into that matchup, or was it still kind of an intimidation factor just knowing they had won those last five tournaments? You know, I don't even think we looked at what they did. We just knew we had to handle our business. Once we handle our business, then everything else is going to play out itself. So we going in there. We got that win. You got to get the next one. And, and do everything that came out like that way. We never looked at what, who was on the other. Well, I'm not, not going to say we never looked at who was on the other team, but it was more so our us practicing against each other built confidence between our players. So we knew that they might have them, but we got us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we, we didn't really care about what they were doing. It was all about what all if we, if we played our game the way we're supposed to play our game, then we know we'd be good. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I always felt like these Duke teams were overrated. I felt like if you found Duke, you were all American. You know, and we all get you guys at AU. And I'm like, you know, Sean Dockery, that's how I felt. He wasn't that much, you know, two tiers better than me. These guys are five stars. And they got to give us a lower star because they're going to these schools. And, you know what I mean? Like, shout out to Travis and everything. He was McDonald's. But I know everybody else had to feel some type of way like I felt like these guys aren't the McDonald's and these, you know, we're going to show them that we're better. So I, that's, that was one of my motivations every time I was like, them. like, you know, I don't think that because they have to do across the chest and they're gods or something. You know, I, I think in that situation, what we did going into that Duke game, we just got ourselves ready to play. We, we didn't worry about we were playing Duke or, yeah, you know, some teams lost before they played Duke. Oh, we're playing Duke. We can't beat them. Uh, they're they're the best team in the last thirty years. Whatever. We never bought into that with, with our team in, in two thousand three, two thousand four. We just we just made sure we were ready to play because you know once again you don't have any time. You know you you just you, you're very limited in what you can do. So very important that we played well. You know not not that we you know not not that we knew everything Duke was going to do, but that we played well was the key thing in that game. And in that game, you guys, Duke was leading by 12 points with around five minutes left to play. How much did that prior game of experience of overcoming, you know, a 21-point lead then kind of kick in the drive and help you guys close that one out and force it in the overtime? Yeah, I mean, uh, <clears throat> I think uh, it was about at that time, and, and John had already been on a roll. Um, but specifically, down by 12, I'm pretty sure he was I mean, he was, he was upset. I mean, the stuff he was doing was unbelievable. You know, we all, being JG, and, you know, ever since I came to the session, we spent a lot of time with him together. And he just put it all together uh, in the right moment. You know, I mean, he, he down the stretch, you know, coach, we mentioned he was getting the ball in his hands, close and set, and it was spread. Guys were on islands, and John was just killing people. I mean, pull-ups, 
and ones in that, those last couple of minutes. And uh, it gave us a lot of confidence. If we just get that, then, you know, you know better, better championship, and that's exactly what happened. What else stands out to you guys from that game and then just after, you know, being able to cut down the nets and, uh, you know, celebrate Maryland, just like, you know, Coach mentioned, just the third ACC tournament championship in school history. The funny story is, is, is when the firearm went off in the, in the crowd, that, that was always something that still got in the back of my mind. What happened with that? So nobody want to tell that story? You brought it up. <laughs> I don't even know what happened. I don't even yeah. know what happened. I, 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 fire alarm. I, I, I said fire alarm. I said fire arm. Oh, fire arm. The guy's the gun. Somebody got that. And the lady had a gun on him. Well, moving on then. <laughs> I, I honestly have no idea what you're talking about. Um, yeah, when, when, uh, when, when, when the bodyguard, uh, what was it, Bashadi's bodyguard shot himself? No, yeah. that wasn't that. That wasn't that year, John. <laughs> yes, it was. That year. <laughs> it, it, what was it? ACC yeah, tournament? That was, but it was a different game. It was the first game. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I remember that was crazy. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad. I'm sure Steve Bashadi's glad you brought that up. <laughs> 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 you, you, you don't mean no filter, Coach. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, nah, yeah, I, I definitely remember. Uh, I mean, like I said, it's funny now to be the biggest thing. I was winning it in that tenth game. I had a joke about us winning it. Like I said, for me, it's still like a. You know, we move so fast in the world now, but our like friends, our family, so we so we have a chance to like kind of reflect on that tournament and those games. You know. Like a, Travis, you sound like a mouse. Yeah, yeah you're, you're like a little low. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, good, girl. Yeah, there you go. I was okay. it was just me. All right. <laughs> I just said, you know, we just never had time to really celebrate our our, our big games like that, you know. Um, I, I think, like I said, that Duke game was at, what, 1 o'clock? So it was over, like, around 3. We was back home around 5, 30, 6. So, you know, we was able to, like, you know, enjoy that moment for a little bit. What was the experience like being able to, you know, cut down the night, the nets, and you know, be awarded the trophy and everything like that? I, I just felt like it was even more fun because we were such a young team as well. You know, I mean, Jamar being the long singer, I was ha- we were happy for Jamar that you know being the leader of the team that he was able to, you know, him and Mike Grant and things like that. But you know, just just sharing it with the guys. Like I said, Nick, you know. Um, uh, Chris, Travis, you know what I mean? Like coming in, our our, our group, our core, you know, that 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 was really special. And just, you know, even the younger guys, it, it was a great experience out there for everybody. And some of the um, older alumni, uh, people that had followed their own basketball, you know, from the 60s on up, the, the ACC tournament was bigger than the NCAA tournament for a while until, you know, Bird, Magic, and all that took place, like, in the late 70s. Uh, those people, to them, that meant as much as winning the NCAA championship as winning that NCAA 
uh, ACC tournament championship because, you know, especially to beat Duke in the championship game, that meant so much to so many people that, you know, that's the feeling I got. You know, and as I got older, you know, I got out of coaching and things like that. You remember the feeling as much as anything, as any individual play. You remember how you felt after the ACC championship. You know, you remember how you felt coming out at Xfinity and seeing the people there. And I think there are the things for you guys that you'll always have. You know, you'll forget individual plays and things like that, but you'll never forget where you were, how you felt, you know, your friends uh, that, that could celebrate with you. They, they were, you know, those things are as important as anything you've ever done in basketball. Yeah, you you just cherish those moments because uh, me as a freshman, I'm thinking like, oh, we just won the ACC. This is how it's going to be every year. You know, like we got our, our team coming back for the next couple of years. Oh, right. we're going to win everything. And that's right. just not the case. You, know, you, you never know what's going to happen. So when you're in that moment and then when you go reflect back, you, you look back and you're like, man, I, that was a great moment that we all shared together and one of the best times that we had at Maryland. Definitely. And Coach, you mentioned, you know, just what that meant, for, how special that was to win the ACC tournament. You know, obviously you'd won the national championship a few years earlier, but how much did it mean to you? How special was it? What were your emotions in that moment, just being able to get your first ACC tournament? Well, I always, um, I always, you know, kind of coast uh, the chip on my shoulder. And um, we had lost uh, the last guys uh, from the championship team, uh, Taj Holden, uh, Steve Blake, uh, Drew Nicholas um, had all, uh, and Ryan Randall had all, left and you know like I said earlier we I knew we could be good I didn't know how we were going to get there and sometimes you have to play your way into it and I think that's what we did that year but I, I was really upset that people didn't give us a chance really at the start of you know our year in 2003-2004 and you know the year before we had missed a jump shot to go to the Elite Eight and you know, we, we had another good team that year after the championship year. And so now here we come with a bunch of new guys or guys that were want to play different roles. And uh, I, I wanted people to have more faith in that. And they didn't at the start of the year. So that, that gave me my motivation. I was going to do anything I could to try to help the team be as good as possible. And I think the players bought into that. And, they, you know, the, the guys really stayed tough. And that's tough when you're young. It's tough when you're young to lose games, to lose games in a tough way and still come back and have great practices so you can get better. I thought this team did that. And then how exciting was it for everyone going into the first NCAA tournament against UTEP? I mean, it was, it was great. We were riding the momentum of the ACC tournament and everything. And, you know, we, we were hoping that we were just trying to get as far as possible. You know, just keep the wins rolling. That, that was my mindset, and I'm pretty sure that was the mindset of you know the guys that when I was having these having these conversations, we're trying to get all the way. Yeah, I remember that was a tough team. Um, I wish this this in retrospect, I wish this group had the opportunity to get back on the, on that stage. But I remember uh, in my freshman year when we played UNC Greensboro in, uh, in the first round and. It was hit a sugar beater, um, you know, and then we played Utah the next day in the first round. There's so many good teams, um, you know, in the tournament. And it was, you know, it was a great experience against Syracuse, um, you know, and then I'm going into that game. And it was so much it was a very really talented team, uh, and they were dangerous. Um, you know, but I think we, we did well in that game. And then, obviously, Syracuse was a close game, and, you know, unfortunately, they beat uh, and then, unfortunately, the unfortunate part of this respect is that we didn't get back to the tournament. You know, I feel like, you know, I, I talk about it quite a bit looking back. I feel like we kind of got robbed, um, you know, with – I think we had, were I, – I think Coach would know, because I remember he told us this, we were the first team in ACC to have, like, a 500 or better ACC uh, record and then also beating up the team and not making the, the tournament. Um, you know, and I remember that was tough to swallow. It was that really tough to swallow. But, um, you know, we had a great group, and, and I think that was probably the most unfortunate part. Yeah, I, I thought that, um, you know, we, we had a very good chance and we didn't get the opportunity to play. And, 
you know, that always bothered me. You know, people think that, you know, you, you ask for success as a coach, but you still have things you remember that bother you that, that I didn't think were, were fair. Uh, Chris McCray not playing the second semester of the senior year, that was outrageous. That, that was – our administration did not do a good job, and I'll say that, of backing what I wanted to do in that situation. And I just thought that uh, that, that obviously it hurt the team this year, but it also hurt Chris. And, you know, Chris didn't do anything to deserve that. He had done a good job academically his four years uh, at Maryland. And so, you know, you, re- you remember things like that. And uh, But at the same time, that, that's, you know, you as, as you go through life, and you guys have experienced a lot of stuff. Now, you know, you're not young guys anymore. And, you know, you, you see that everything's not always fair, that, that, that uh, you know, and, and so you get you got to really hang on to the things that are great, you know, and I always try to do that in coaching. I mean, I had a lot of disappointments in coaching. But at the same time, teams like yours, you know, they made things great. And, you know, that, that experience, very few people ever get to experience as a coach. And so, you know, I always appreciated that. And especially I started out as a, John, I started out as a junior varsity coach in Camden, New Jersey. And, uh, you know, guy got some breaks along the way to get into the college game and, you know, just went from there. But, you know, there's no guarantees. And so you take what you can, you, you do as good a job as you can. And I thought you guys did that. You know, that this year we, we did as much as we could uh, in a very difficult situation. I was really proud of that. When you, you guys look back, you know, now, just how special was that experience just to be able to, you know, win the ACC tournament to play, you know, on such a national stage in the NCAA tournament? Like, what do you remember most, whatever it was, you know, just feeling the experience when you, you know, look back now? Me personally, the bond that you create with, you know, your fellow teammates, the coaching staff, and things like that, and then, you know, like you said, it was years ago, and we go on, and I still follow the career of, you know, careers of guys and stuff like that, and just to hear how everyone has, you know, gone on their life and are uh, winners and champions in their lives. You know, I feel like the wins and the losses and things that we experienced in the game of basketball has really, you know, as Coach said, it's really uh, given us that toughness to be able to, you know, face each and every day. You know what I mean? So that's just what I take away from it. You know, just life lessons, really. The biggest thing to me when I look at it is the relationship with these guys. Um, you know, I'm also humble to learn from Coach. You know, about preparing to be a pro. I mean, I didn't realize how much I was preparing to be a pro when I was at Maryland. With just what our team was, the way the coach managed our team, and that, uh, his expectations. For us. Um, you know, and I, I, I reached out and I told him, I mean, it really helped prepare me as a man uh, for, for life after college as a pro. Um, you know, and so for those life lessons, the coach is just talking about have been huge for me throughout my career. Um, you know, in some of those the tough situations, winning the ACC, some of the tough moments prepared me equally, if not more, for, for the future. Um, so, you know, I just appreciate you. I appreciate you, Coach. You know, it, it just was an incredible experience. The friendships, that we had, the good times we had on the court, but also off the court. You know, we had, we had, we were, had a really good time. Uh, maybe sometimes maybe too much of a good time, but ultimately, you know, we, we uh, you know, those are memories that, that you know, I'll always remember and hold oh, really close. Do you guys have any favorite memories or moments off the court? <laughs> ah, not for sure. Too, too many. Too, <laughs> too many. Yeah. Yeah. Too, too many. Oh man! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> college part. Well, I, wow, think, college I think part. Um, I think at the ACC tournament because remember we stayed on a golf course. I think John stole one of the golf carts and we. Thank you. Thank you. John did it. John. I remember, I remember we got in trouble for that Fake during news. the tournament. Fake news. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave that. I, didn't, I didn't know that one. <laughs> yeah, hey, that's why. Italy. Fake, Italy. Fake news. Italy. Yeah, fake news. Fake news. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you guys went on that international trip, right? Hey, that was dope. That was a, a fun experience. That was really good. That was that was good. That was fun. I mean, that, that was my, 
I think my second time abroad with basketball, the first time we just went to South America with AAU trip, but to be able to go and to see Venice out, that was that was a life changing experience, and that kind of really opened my eyes to a lot of you know even just going back to play international after that. You know, I'm, I'm just very, you know, you know, I want to piggyback off of Nixon. I'm just very thankful for the opportunity of Coach Williams and the other coaching staff and everybody gives the opportunity to come play at Maryland and to go along with just because basketball, you know, shows you a lot of places and you get to do a lot of cool things. And, you know, it, it changed all our lives for the better, I believe. What was your guys' favorite memory from that trip? Yeah, I think. My mom was Venice. I mean, ride, riding on those uh, those boats. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that, that was yeah. amazing. Venice like, was when you amazing. You see things you see on the postcard and TV and actually are there in real time. I mean, it's just, yeah, you can't put it in words, in my opinion. Me, the yeah. food was unbelievable. Like, hearing about, you know, Italian food, we were so fortunate to go to, like, some incredible restaurants when we were out there, not only just playing the European competition, which was a great experience, but also we got to go to Lake Como, which is like, to this day, the most unbelievable thing I've ever seen with that whole landscape with the mountains and the lake. And, um, you know, and yeah, the food was incredible on that trip. I remember the food specifically. Wrong went to Rome as well. That was nice. Yeah. It's nice. And I figured we could end things here with uh, a fun segment we do. Uh, we'll play most of my So uh, I'll go around, or I guess I'll just call one of these out. Um, and you can say who on the team, whether you're here or not on the call, uh, fits it best. So uh, who is most likely to be the most competitive uh, in practice? Or just about like anything, regardless of what's going on? All of us. I remember, I remember Dre was a killer in practice. I mean, he was he always in practice was uh, you know played at a really high level. So I remember Dre being super competitive in practice. He 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 had a chip on his shoulder. You know, always trying to uh, prove that, that he should be on. The field. He was he was always a handful in practice for sure. I actually told Andre. I mean, I, I was like, I had to try to cheat. I had to play him old man game style because his skills were so nice. <laughs> yeah. I had to body him and boom a lot because he, he was nice. He kind of reminded me of where he was able to get a shot off the step back. So I, I was able to, so some of the moves in the ACC tournament, I actually stole it from Andre a lot. And speaking of practice, who is most likely to hit a half court shot in practice? <laughs> Who said that? Oh. <laughs> mm-hmm. anybody, anybody had the clue to shoot a half court on practice. I don't know if that would have gone over too well with Or just like when you yeah, guys yeah, practice, practice it, just around and on it at, Ex- at Comcast Center at a time. I'll, I'll, I'll nominate Mike Jones. Like he didn't. His range was incredible. Yeah. I'd say Mike Jones for sure. Yeah. Uh, who on the team had the best dance moves? Me? Uh, <laughs> nah, definitely not. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. Chris thought he, I could, I can't, Chris, I can't thought he, Chris thought he had the best he dance like, moves. Dude, he's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we all had our moments. Dance <laughs> dance moves. The Clips was like his favorite group back then. Oh and man, the Virginia guys do some weird shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> we're not gonna talk about him, man. Yeah, we, 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 we're kind, we're kind of like on the island out here. <laughs> yeah. Town on the island out here. Uh, who uh, was the best dunker on the team? Jamal. Mm. It, yeah. Mike, Mike Jones. Mike Jones. Uh, Mike Jones. I don't know, man. Mike Jones would get up. I'm about to say, Nick, Mike, Nick and Mike has some dunks. Mike Jones. Yeah, Mike Jones. Yeah, yeah, Between Jamal and Mike. Nick, too. Nah, you know, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, of course, Nick, yeah. 
I mean, Nick, Nick was like a bro. A Nick power. was a power dunker. Yeah. <laughs> Throwing that hard two hand to sit on the rim and all that. So it was. Yeah. I always liked, like, when Nick caught, caught alley oops and stuff like that. Because he mm-hmm. was going to go Yeah. yeah. So, now I take that back. James gets all day. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was, was going to bring him up. <laughs> yeah. He yeah. Like, he all day long. yeah. He don't count, man. It's cash. <laughs> yeah. He don't count. He don't count. <laughs> it's cash, man. Oh, my God. Yeah, James, James. James. I played James, against James right? one year overseas, and he probably had like 10 dunks that game. Mm. Like, it was stupid. Oh, he was in Italy? But, yeah, in Italy. Okay. Oh. He, had, like, 10, he had like 10 dunks that game. That was, that was his first year out, wasn't it? Yeah, that was um right after that he went he went to Greece right after that I think. Um, yeah. I want to say Panathinaikos. Yeah, he, he's not normal because he's still dunking like that today. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. James James is a different breed. James, a different breed. James he does a great job of of taking care of his, his body though. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, he, he does it. I talk to him every now and then um, over the years. Like, he, he does he does a really good job in the summertime. All right. Uh, who had the best shoe game on the team? Me, for Me? sure. Two. Two, yeah, two. Yeah. And uh, who is the most likely to pull a prank on other guys on the team? I say, yeah, yeah Chris, Jamar, Chris, Jamar, 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 all day, all day. Way. I own it. I own it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Are there any members? I invited him to my home. He pulled a prank on me. <laughs> oh, you come on, Ellie? Yeah. Hey, I got him good. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Do you remember any of his pranks from that season? Any ones that stand out? So that was a long time ago. I'm trying yeah. to remember. <laughs> you might remember when you got to be Travis. I, can, I can't remember nothing from back then. Not me either. Yeah, that, that was a while ago. College Club was a great place. <laughs> mm-hmm. Great place. Great place. And I guess we'll end on that. Thank you guys all so much for joining. I really appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Great to see you guys. Great to see you guys. Good to see you guys.